What are gut healing vegetables and why should you care about them? In today's video, let's talk about what gut healing foods are, why are they important for you and how you can grow them in your own small backyard garden. It does not even need to be a big space. You can even grow them on a balcony. So let's get into it. Gut healing foods or vegetables include foods that help feed the gut microbiome. Now, why is this important for you? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Or you didn't. <laughs> Maybe you didn't. The more plant-based diversity in your diet, the stronger and healthier your microbiome and the stronger and healthier you can be. Gut microbiomes play a huge role in our mood, energy levels, motivation, and our sense of reward. An unhealthy gut is related to inflammation and diseases like cancer, autoimmunity, obesity, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, alcoholic hepatitis, non-alcoholic fatty liver, and the list goes on and on. I recently read this book called Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Bolshevich and I really hope I'm not butchering his name. And it was just eye-opening for me. I absolutely loved it. I loved how much information it had and I was absolutely fascinated by it. I've been implementing some of the lessons from the book in my everyday diet and my weekly menus. And I've also been talking about it with my brother, my sister-in-law and my husband. And we've been making small changes to our own diet. So this video is going to be a summary of the book. And also, if you are interested in gardening and growing your own vegetables, I wanted to give you a list of vegetables that you can grow in your own garden. Some of the varieties that have either worked for me or are good varieties that can work in a small backyard garden. I also want to say that we are at the beginning of an era where we have just tapped into this research into gut microbiome and the research is still new. We're still getting a lot of information and there's a lot more research to come out of this in the next 10 to 20 years. I don't think we're there yet where we have a lot of research but we have some initial research and that looks really promising. I wanted to get it on your radar so you can implement this in your day-to-day -day life if you're interested and start including some of these plants in your diet. The human GI tract harbors more than, wait for this, 100,000 billion microorganisms. That is insane. And when we talk about our gut microbiome, these are bacteria and fungi that live in our large intestine. We have also recently discovered that the gut is a separate nervous system in itself and it is called the second brain or the enteric nervous system. Our brain health starts in the gut where about 500 million nerves are constantly sending feedback to our brain through the vagus nerve. And dysbiosis is a term that is used by healthcare professionals when there is a loss of harmony and balance in the gut. There can be a loss of beneficial bacteria, increased bad bacteria, and overall a loss of diversity of the microbes. One of the key ingredients in these gut healing foods is fiber. And this fiber gets converted into short chain fatty acids in the intestine. In this form, it acts as a crisis negotiator in reducing the inflammation in the body. For example, there was a study done by Dr. Andrew Reynolds in The Lancet that found that an increase in your daily dietary fiber intake led to increased protection against colorectal, breast, and esophageal cancer. Three other studies, a large 2017 meta-analysis, the prospective EPIC Oxford study, and the Adventist study all found the same thing. A fiber-fueled diet reduced your chance of developing cancer. In another study, Dr. Rob Knight found that consumption of 30 different plants in a given week was the greatest predictor of gut microbial activity. When I first heard that, I was like, wow, 30 plants in a week? That's a lot. How am I going to include that many different varieties in my diet? But this is quite a big list. And once you start looking at it, you will realize that you do end up eating a lot of these foods. They can be easier to include in your diet. They include prebiotics, fermented foods, and anti-inflammatory foods. In today's video, though, I only want to focus on the fruits and vegetables that can help your gut and you can grow in your backyard. Most of them, even in your balconies. If you have heard the term, eat the rainbow, this is the reason why. If you want to prioritize as to what to eat, here's how you can do that. Diversity of plants, prebiotics, 
and probiotics. When prebiotics and probiotics combine, you get postbiotics, which end up helping your gut microbiome. Before I get into the varieties of vegetables that you can actually grow, I want to talk about some of the power couples in vegetables because these are absolutely fascinating and can give you an extra boost by creating a synergistic effect. The first one for anyone who loves guacamole is tomatoes and avocados. Tomatoes are rich in lycopene and they reduce cancer and cardiovascular risk. And the healthy fats from the avocados make this lycopene more bioavailable for your body. Second is kale and lemon. Kale is a plant-based source of iron. It is a non-heme source of iron that is less bioavailable for the body. But if you squeeze lemon on the kale, the vitamin C from the lemon is going to crank up the iron absorption of the kale. Third is turmeric and black pepper. This one was absolutely fascinating for me because we eat turmeric so much in various Indian recipes and I also love making turmeric latte whenever I'm like feeling a little sick or down. Curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric and black pepper increases the bioavailability of this curcumin by, wait for this, two thousand percent. So I feel like this is one of my favorite power couples. And the fourth one, which is easy and I think a lot of us do, is a mixed fruit bowl. When you combine different fruits, it results in a greater antioxidant activity of those fruits in the body. Now let's start with the different vegetables. I'm going to divide them in terms of the rainbow. So this, let's start looking at the green vegetables. Broccoli is a great vegetable to grow in your backyard. Even if you grow it as microgreens, it has very very strong cancer protection. And if you want to look at a variety to grow in your backyard, Waltham is a great variety because it's highly productive, creates lots of side shoots, even once you harvest the main head. And it is a compact plant that does not grow taller than 24 inches. For cauliflower, I live in a warmer zone of 10B, so it's harder to grow cauliflower here. So if you're looking for a heat tolerant or bolt resistant variety, cheddar and Floretto 70 are pretty good varieties to grow. Peas, Kelvedon Wonder is a heavy yielding succession planted pea that can give you high yields. It is a heavy yielding early pea that can be grown in succession plantings in your gardens. Another one is Terrain which is an extremely high yielding pea that you can grow in the garden and it shows excellent resistance to powdery mildew and can grow right up to first frost so it grows from March up until August if you successively sow it. Next one is zucchini. In this one, Parthenon is a unique variety that you can grow in a greenhouse and also outdoors. It is Parthenocarpic, which basically means that it doesn't need insects to pollinate it. And you can stalk it or even trellis it to grow into an open habit, making the harvesting much more easier. Garlic, a soft neck, non-bolting type. This is one of the popular ones grown in California. It rarely bolts and has a long storage life. Here are some of the varieties you can grow. Artichoke, silver skin, creole, asiatic, and turban. Chives are an excellent perennial herb to grow in your garden. I am going to definitely plant some this year in my garden because I love adding chives to eggs and they can be overwintered and also produce these absolutely gorgeous pink blooms on them that are edible, that you can use in different salads or to dress up your meals. Potatoes, especially white potatoes, are an excellent source of prebiotic resistant starch. I have usually grown potatoes straight from the ones that I get in my grocery store. I just leave them in the pantry for a long time until I see sprouts and then I go ahead and plant them in the garden. The next one is strawberries and I am telling you if you have never grown strawberries, strawberries to please, please, please plant some strawberries in your garden. They are super easy to grow and they are so much fun. There's nothing more magical than going into your backyard garden and seeing these strawberries hanging off the plants. Amazing. My twins love it. And actually, I think that might be one of the reasons they absolutely love gardening. 
Every day in summer, they'll go out in the garden, search for strawberries, pick them up, eat them right off of the plants. And it is such a wonderful and wholesome experience for all of us. So I would definitely recommend growing strawberries. I've been growing alpine strawberries, and I think the other one is june-bearing strawberries, if I'm not mistaken. Whatever variety you think will work best in your zone, try them out. The alpine strawberries are different than the usual ones. They are tinier, but they are so much more sweeter. They do so well in different kinds of mocktails and teas that I have made with them. I love them. So that is something I would definitely recommend. The next one is blueberries. And I have wanted blueberries in my garden for such a long time. I just don't have a good spot for them in the garden right now. And I think I'm just going to give up and just plant them in a container, which will be better because not only will I be able to move them around the garden per how much sunlight they can get in the garden, but also I can control the soil because they're acid-loving plants and do really well in acidic soil. I'm definitely experimenting with them uh, this year. Here are three varieties that you can look at. If you're in a warmer zone, bushel and berry has a lot of different options. Here are two options. One of them that I've been looking at is the speed sorbet blueberry. It works really well in zones 5 to 10. It's a dwarf variety. It needs 300 chill hours. So it is one of the plants that will do well in the south for anyone with a warmer zone. The other one that is very popular is a sunshine blue blueberry. It is a southern high bush variety. It grows really well in zones 5 to 10. It only needs 150 chill hours. So it's even better than the other one. And if you're in a colder zone, if you are living in really cold climates, but you want to grow blueberries, here's an option for you. There is a blueberry that I came across, which is called North Sky Blueberry. It is extremely cold hardy and grows really well in zones three to seven. And it needs chill hours of 800 plus. I read that it also grows well, even if it has frost on the branches. So if you are living in an extremely cold area, that might be a great option for you. Apples. You know the old saying that goes an apple a day keeps a doctor away? <laughs> that actually is true. A medium-sized apple has about 4.4 grams of fiber and it may contain up to 100 million bacteria. 100 million in one apple. That's absolutely bonkers. I love the taste of Fuji apples and I really wanted to plant one in my garden. I didn't know how it would grow, especially here in San Diego in zone 10B. But I planted it in my garden and I chose this dwarf espalier variety so I could grow it against my fence wall. And it has performed really well over the past three years. I've loved how many apples it's given me last year because of the two hailstorms that we got, it lost a lot of the produce during the storms. But it, I still got about seven or eight apples on this tiny, tiny apple tree in my garden. I would definitely recommend it. Tomatoes are another of my favorite plants to grow. If you've not seen my previous video, check out right here. They have grown so well in my garden this year. And the majority of the ones that I grew were indeterminate and they just performed like crazy. And I would recommend, even if you have a balcony garden, plant a tomato in a container on your balcony and it would not disappoint you. It provides antioxidants and protection against prostate cancer. One of my favorite varieties from last year has been the Sun Gold variety and they performed so well. The Sun Gold tomatoes are so delicious. They are so sweet right off of the tomato plant. It just tastes like a dessert. It tastes so sweet and delicious. I don't think I've ever eaten a sweeter tomato than the Sun Gold and I would definitely recommend all of you try it out. Oranges, they protect against cancer and heart disease and there are so many varieties you can grow in your garden. I currently have five different varieties of oranges in my garden and they 
all have done really well apart from i think the blood orange the blood orange has not been producing as well but other than that all my other oranges have done really well in my garden there are so many varieties that you can grow and i especially love the satsuma mandarin if there's one orange that i would have to recommend i would recommend the satsuma mandarin all the varieties i'm growing in my garden are dwarf kinds because i don't have a lot of space and i didn't want them to grow too tall in my tiny backyard garden so i have especially planted all these dwarf varieties lemons they protect against cancer and heart disease my favorite variety to grow is meyer lemon I love this. If you ask of one variety that you can grow in your garden, the one you want to start with, I would recommend a Meyer lemon. It tastes absolutely amazing in everything. I have used it so much in the last year. Actually, for the last six months of last year, I didn't buy a single lemon from the store. I constantly had lemons on my plant and it's a variety that grows really well into pots too just make sure you have a good citrus soil that is well draining in the pot and so, uh, just so that they don't catch root rot and it will thrive and do really well in your garden if you live in a colder zone you can overwinter them inside your house and bring these trees especially if they are in a pot inside your house and you can have lemons all year long. If you want to start with one fruit tree in your garden, start with a lemon tree and especially a Meyer lemon. I love it so much more than a Eureka lemon. I would plant it in a 10 gallon container with well draining soil and you should be set for at least three to five years. Spinach is something I have been trying to grow in my garden and have not been successful yet, but I'm still going to try again this year. Spinach protects against cancer and gives you healthy eyesight. I've been growing bloomsbury spinach here in my garden but i think i was trying it out in warmer months so it was bolting all the time i'm going to try again and see if it grows this year kale is another great plant to grow in your garden i grew a lacinato kale one year but before i could transplant it into my raised beds i ended up traveling and the seedling dried up if there's one kale i would recommend it's red russian kale or it's lacinato kale the advantage having a kale plant in your garden is that it can grow throughout all season because you don't have to harvest the whole head. You can just harvest a few leaves every time and it will keep the head constantly growing and producing all season long, giving you a much larger produce throughout the season. Carrots are great for your health and the three varieties that I would recommend would be Chantenay, Nantes and Danvers. I hope this encourages you to plant some of these vegetables and if you want to know how to get started with tomatoes in small spaces check out this video right here.